Today we're going to talk about uh, counting and sampling without replacement and this will include a derivation of the hypergeometric distribution. I'm going to start out with a motivational example. Uh, suppose that you're a spy and that you have 10 poison pills and 40 placebos. Okay. These pills all look the same and they all come mixed together in a single bottle. You've been captured by the enemy and you must dispatch yourself. What is the probability if you take a handful of five of these pills at random that one of them will be poison? Okay, so this is an example of what's called a hypergeometric experiment. And a hypergeometric experiment has the following conditions. There are A successes, there are B failures, there are N trials altogether, and we have a random variable X that counts the number of successes. Okay, so A, B, N, and X. Okay, so if we're looking for the probability of having exactly little x successes, uh, this is the number of samples of size n that have x successes in them divided by the total number of samples of size n. And so these, having to count up these two different quantities introduces us to a part of mathematics known as counting. Okay, now we start out here, the number of samples of size n that have x successes in them. How would you count that up? Well, first you would take the number of ways to take x from the available number a of total successes available. And then you would multiply that times the number of way to take n minus x from the number b of failures. Okay. Again, this brings us counting. And in counting, uh, we will have two different concepts to talk about which are, are very important. The first one, permutations. The second, combinations. And the, you keeps, will keep asking yourself, well, will he give us an easy way to do this? And I have to say, I'm sorry, this is the easy way to do it. Uh, first, we'll talk, talk about the word a permutation. A permutation is an ordered list. The order matters when you have a permutation. Okay, We denote uh, as n p are the number of ordered lists of length r that can be made from n items. And here, little r is not ever going to be any bigger than n. All right. Okay, so examples of permutation. Okay, choosing the members of a church to be chairs of the, the, the finance, the personnel, and the membership committee. Okay. Uh, this is a permutation because we're, we're, there, there's an order given to them the minute we start putting labels on them. Okay, uh, Choosing members of a theater group to be Mo, Larry, and Curly. Okay, And choosing positions, and here you have to be very careful, positions for fielding in softball because you have different positions people can play in the field and you put labels on them when you do that. Okay. Okay, now, so let's start here. Then if we have n objects, how many ways can you list them first? Well we when you start out, uh, there are n objects, you pick one of them. Okay. That leaves you n minus one objects. So you pick one of those. Uh, 
then there are n minus two objects, so and so forth. You keep on going until there is only one way left to choose. Now, to get all of the possible ways of chewing, choosing this, not chewing it, choosing it, uh, you multiply all of these together, and the name for this is n factorial, right? N factorial. You, you pronounce that exclamation part, mark at the end as factorial. Okay, so an example here. How many ways are there to fill the offices of president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and custodian, custodian in a club of five people if no one can have more than one job? Okay, well, uh, five ways to choose the first one, four ways to choose the second, three ways to choose the third, two ways the first one, and you know, one guy gets stuck being the, the last. Uh, multiply these together, 120. So 5 factorial is equal to 120. Okay. Now, there is a formula, and you probably have a key on your calculator that says NPR. Okay. Uh, NPR, what does it do? It'll, it'll count out the objects, but, but not all the way to the end. Okay, so it is N times N minus 1 and goes out here so that you have basically like um, R different factors, right? Okay, now uh, we can write this out uh, in a formula using factorials as NPR is equal to N factorial divided by N minus R, okay, and then take the factorial. This is not the same as N factorial minus R factorial, however much you might want that to be so. Okay. <sighs> Combinations. Okay, a combination is an unordered list. Okay. NCR, which can also be denoted by this. We read this as N choose R, and there is not supposed to be a little line there. This isn't a fraction N divided by R. Okay, this is N choose R. Okay, uh, it's just a symbol as we have it here. Uh, so it means exactly the same as this denotes the number of unordered lists of length r that can be made from n objects. Okay, so npr, okay, the number of ordered lists is, okay, first the number of ways that we can get our, our n, our, our r items from n, and then the number of different ways that we can order those items. So it's NCR times R factorial and we can solve this by saying NCR is NPR divided by R factorial. You replace this with its formula. You do the math on it and you get that NCR is equal to N factorial over R factorial times N minus R quantity factorial. Okay. Ah. So, we now return to the motivational example. Okay, you are a spy, you have 10 poison pills, you have 40 placebos, these pills look the same, they all become mixed together in a single bottle, you're captured by the enemy, and you must dispatch yourself what is the probability if you ha take a handful of five at random, one of them will be poison? Okay. Well, all right, well, we have the, our formula we, we can feed. Okay. We have um, uh, ten, 10 pills that are poison, uh, which is one. Okay. Uh, it, it turns out to be actually poison. We have 40 that are placebos. Okay, in our uh, sample, so four will be placebo. And so this numerator denotes the number of ways that we can get those four, those five pills in our hands, one of which will be poisonous. 
and the denominator here is the number of different ways we can just choose pills from this uh, bottle without looking. And 10 choose 1 is 10, 40 choose 4 is 91,390, and 50 choose 5 is 2,118,760. You do the math and you get 0 .431. So there's a bit less than a 50% chance of getting a poison pill in this way.